My name's Kevin Vandiver and we're here at my farm at Vandiver's Newcastle Farms, uh, about six miles north of Forest City, um, right off of I-40 on Highway 284. I moved, uh, when I got out of the Army in 2005 and moved home, I, I bought this property. Um, it was an old peach orchard and it had been, uh, trees had been pulled up and it had been uh, just mainly pasture at that point. As a couple of years went by and I've kind of decided I wanted to do something different with it. Uh, met my wonderful wife, Jenny, and we were starting a new family and got married in 2007. And I started down on that end of the field uh, and planted 300 uh, Leland Cypress. I went and started going to live Christmas tree farms as a kid and I really always thought it was a neat thing and enjoyed it. And I knew as being a part-time farmer that I, I needed something that I could manage during the summer and something that I could do during the holidays. So we started planting um, a few hundred trees per year. In 2012, I believe, was the first year that I went to market with Christmas trees. And, and we grew Leland Cypress, and we also grow, this is a blue ice Christmas tree, it's kind of a novelty, it's a type of cypress. So we started growing a few of those, and as most people know, we, we can't grow Fraser firs in Arkansas. So what a lot of local tree farmers have found is to meet what their customers want. They'll grow what we can grow here in Arkansas, and then we work with other farms. I found a farm in North Carolina. So we started buying in a few Fraser firs to supplement. I've tried to prevent us from becoming a tree lot, and I want us to keep, I want us to feel like when that family comes out, they're not coming to a parking lot to pick up a Christmas tree. They're coming to see Kevin or James and Charles or Jenny or Nita, and they're gonna, and it's part of their family tradition. So as with the way we display our trees and, and, and trying to maintain the quality of the Fraser firs, maintain the quality of the Leland Cypress, and keeping it on a smaller scale allows us to have a little bit better control because the larger you get, the more people are involved, the, the, the bigger the scope of everything is, and this kind of allows us to, to just keep the atmosphere of a small family farm, to keep the authenticity of it, and, and to keep the quality of where we think it should be. We're open basically the Saturday before Thanksgiving. We close around the second, third week in December. And uh, my two boys are, have grown up from being two and three years old to uh, they're up there right now making wreaths. So uh, we, we, we make our own wreaths here. Uh, we have my mother cooks and brings in a lot of uh, cakes and pastries and jams and jellies from our garden that we have. It's a tradition. It's, 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 I've got some people that have bought a tree for me every year. They bring their kids out and it is an event for them. Uh, in my other life, I own a heating and air and refrigeration service company. And I'll be honest with you, that's a, that's a great company and, and I love it to death and it, it puts food on the table. But I tell people, nobody is happy when their air conditioner breaks in August, but they, but they call us. Everybody that comes here is wanting a family experience. When, when I come home and we open up the farm, the two boys are here, they're handing out hot chocolate to people. My mom's here, my wife's here, my dad comes by. Now, dad will tell you real quick, he's a, he's a visitor in the operation. It, it's just a family affair. And, and I think it's very important growing up nowadays that we still kind of keep in touch with that. Um, and, they're, and, and, and you're starting to see, I, I know a lot of small farmers that do chickens and they raise eggs, you know, they sell eggs, but it's, they're doing it with their kids. And, and, and I hope that's what these, this is, will be for the coming years.